Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. Today we have an eye-opener vlog for you and I want to give a big up to Mr. Miguel and also to Mr. Cox for allowing me to showcase forage harvesting and silage making at a large scale level at the Trade Winds facility in Bogwalk. I believe this video would kind of showcase to us smaller farmers because we're not there as yet where is the commercial landscape and where is that we should put our hats that we want to reach to improve livestock productivity. All right, hey guys, we're out here at Chew Juice and they're doing their silage making operation today. But I wanted to kind of show you guys what it takes to do commercial silage at a, at a larger scale. So at Hypro, we provide them with the, the Heineken field harvester. It's a machine that allows it to harvest forages inside the field quickly. It's more efficient than having men with machete. They also have a trailer that we'll use to collect the grass. And then definitely it's all powered by tractor. Right, and we have Mr. Tractor Man there doing a very good work out in the field. So what this does is this in reduces your labor costs and it also increases your farm efficiency in harvesting the forages as fresh chop for your animals or just to make silage which we're about to do today here at Chew Juice. But what is it that Chew Juice is using this machine to harvest? They're actually harvesting sorghum and we all know what sorghum is that high energy crop. Here at Chew Juice they are using sorghum which I believe is a wholesome crop for their silage making. You can it's better to ensile sorghum as it's known to have some toxic compounds when you don't har you have it at the right time. And silage is a process that allows this toxic compound to be reduced. However, the, the forage sorghum that we have here in Jamaica, especially like BMR silage, it can be done fresh chop. So for the sorghum plant, what I really love about it is how digestible it is, um, the, the energy value get that added grains which you know is always loaded with nutrients and this I believe is a crop that pushes milk production and will be the future crop for pushing milk production both for cattle and both for small ruminants. Um, what I love also about you is that they have accepted the whole concept of adding technology to agriculture where they're using machines that allow quicker mechanizations of, of their fields especially a large fodder bank like this having 10 acres it would be pretty ridiculous to have manual cutting as in guys with a machete or so so it's better to invest in the the Heineken machine that Hyper has selling um, it's the field harvester and you also have single row harvesters that works well for cane or, or corn that is planted in, in, in rows this works well for Mombasa works well for even Pangola grass this machine really cuts for all different type of forage species that we have here locally I want us to look at it also at the cut um, the cut is you can adjust the blades on this machine and if you look out in the field you can see how low the cut is I would recommend that we go a little bit lower to have a better regrowth of the sorghum um, based on the, the length outside the field and also you can see that this is a well you know pretty much well germinated field you do have a lot of space inside of it but I'll also recommend that farmers we want to have irrigation on sorghum during the first phase of germination which I would say would run us about three weeks and we also want to put back irrigation um, after we cut and we want to do a tuning we want to have some irrigation there for, again for about a month um, it's a drought tolerant crop so it does endure you know heat stress and don't don't also endure low water content in the soil but I recommend that we try to you know have irrigated fodder banks to drive the production to drive the yields because this field could be a it could be a lot it could look a lot more better if we had some water and of it you see a lot more leaf and that's what the sorghum is the sorghum what the sorghum provides you is that excel, excellent leaf era index and here we talk about leaf to stem ratio and sorghum you look at the leaf compared to the stem and it's where all the nutrients is inside this leaf this is what sorghum has and why i call it a premium crop sorghum and corn is a premium crop for, for livestock farmers so guys to harvest forages quickly and efficiently on large-scale farms i would recommend the heineken field harvester machine which basically cuts around six feet wide and you can actually adjust the blades to cut from two inches up to ten inches in height. I believe this machine really improves farm efficiency and at the same time because it cuts the grass and give it to a right particle size it also improves feed efficiency. So farmers I really admire this approach taken by this new investment and I believe that we should adopt similar mechanizations of simple processes on our farm to improve farm efficiency 
and farm productivity. So guys, we talk about chuju silage making and we want to show you the type of method that they'll be using. They'll be using the bunker silo. As you see, they did some very massive looking bunkers to store some of the waste produce that they have from their operation. As chuju juice, they produce orange juice, they produce pineapple juice, June plum juice and all that pulp that will be left over. They would actually either sell it to farmers as orange pulp or citrus pulp or they can store it in their bunkers for a later date in this situation. So what they're actually doing now is to put a layer of citrus pulp and they will throw a layer of sorghum on top of it and then a layer of citrus pulp and that would kind of help with the ensaling process. But I really love the design of this bunker. I think it's a massive investment, a great investment from True Juice to be doing bunker silo making and the design is perfect. We can talk about how it is that they have it sloping coming down let's see them start with the material sloping down because in that slope to have the water to run off or that excess moisture from it and they even built a drainage system that would collect that excess water or moisture that will come from the side which i think is perfect so this is an excellent design it's the future of jamaica commercial livestock for both beef dairy and small ruminant is that we move into bunker silage or plastic bag silage or drum silage but let us talk about further conservation that's the future that's 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 where we guys need to go so thank you guys for watching this vlog i really think it was a, a game changer for us to see how it's that we're actually commercializing the sector by adding technology and by putting in what we see overseas here now locally bunker silage is here guys let's go so guys they're using citrus pulp silage I want the benefits of using citrus pulp size that you don't need any molasses because citrus pulp is already high in water soluble carbohydrates which is what the bacteria use to convert into lactic acid. My only recommendation for the citrus pulp was probably to use some inoculants that can help to guide the process looking at more homofermentative bacteria. But here we have it citrus pulp in bunker silage. When you see the crust getting that hard you know that the process is taking place and I will just do a little compaction to ensure that it's packed properly because density also influences the silage making process. With commercialization and climate change, one of the biggest things that we as livestock farmers need to put in place is fodder conservation and also improving fodder efficiency, feed efficiency. And ultimately this can only be achieved through adopting best practices and the best technologies. So thank you guys for watching this vlog. And see you next time where we visit with Rod on our small ruminant silage training for small farmers.